All right, all of our teens, come to the front while everybody looks for Luke chapter 24 and 13. Luke 24 and 13. And we're going to have some fun this morning. Testing one, two. Nobody knows what I'm about to do, but we're going to have some fun. Come on, I don't bite, bro. Come on down. Oh, okay. All right, that's I understand. I'll try not to get too loud. Amen. Now, let's see here. See, I have my teen class in here because I'm going to work on their uh, um, shyness. So, which one of our teens is the shyest? Brother, they all pointed at you. So, guess what? Come on down. <laughs> Come on, bro. You can do it. All right, go ahead and throw that scripture up there. Would you do us the honor of reading the word this morning? Come on, here, take the microphone, they can't hear you. You don't have to face them, you can, right there, there's your Bible. Read it loud, they, no one's in here, it's just you. Go ahead. Anytime. By the way, that word is Emmaus. Go ahead. Give him a round of applause, everybody. Come on. Come on, man. Okay. Behold, two of them went that the same day to the, a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three so long. All right. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. Good job. Brother John, why you do that? Because I felt like doing it. And I don't know if I felt like doing it. I just I, I think our young people need to uh, uh, know that we stand behind them. Amen. Just like you did just now. The entirety of this church stood behind that young man when he read the Word of God. You see, sometimes we don't feel like we have too much anything. But I'm going to tell you what, more than this church family stands behind you when you proclaim the Word of God. Because there is a church that will stand behind you from this day all the way back to the day of Pentecost in Jerusalem. And that church is founded upon Jesus Christ and Him crucified. So when you stand to read the Word of God, you might feel like you don't have any right. You might feel like you don't have any power. You might feel like that there is no anointing behind you. But I'm going to tell you what, that there is a church that stands behind anyone that will stand on the Word of God. We don't do it alone. Hallelujah. Lord, touch us today. Anoint us, move in this place. In Jesus' name, and the church said amen. amen. You may be seated. And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus. I want to talk to you about the awakening of Emmaus. The awakening of Emmaus. Now, Jerusalem, it was only a little ways from Jerusalem to the village of Emmaus. I don't know if that was a suburb, it's like going to Kirtland, or if it's, you know like going to Flora Vista or like going to, what's the name of this? Anybody know the name of this subdivision? I saw it the other day on a piece of paper. There's actually a name of this subdivision, but maybe it's like going up on, you know, uh, uh, over there where Brother Roger lives or, or going out where, I, sister, I, over where you live, Sister V. Hill, and I don't know where the rest of you live, but anyway, it might be just like going to your house. I, I don't know how far it was. But it, they were walking the same day. What day was that? Well, that was the day of, of Easter morning. Uh, they, the, the ladies that went and they found that Jesus was not in the tomb and, and the angels told them to go back and tell the disciples to go to Jerusalem and, and wait for Him. You see, they, they were given specific instruction by the angels to Mary and the ladies that had went to the tomb. And Jesus just showed up and said, tell them I'm going to meet them and be here, X, Y, Z. This is what you're supposed to do. Two of them decided... We're going to Emmaus. Now, wait, wait a minute. That, that, that's not exactly what the angel told you to do. We're going to Emmaus. You see, there is a meeting going on in Jerusalem. Emmaus is not where it's going to be met at. They're going to meet, and Jesus is wanting to show up and talk to them. 
But sometimes we get on the road to Emmaus. Sometimes we get to trucking down a road and I just am thankful that God shows up when we're on the road away from Jerusalem. I'm glad sometimes the Lord finds His place and His way to where we're at. I would love to say that I've always gone to the right place at the right time doing the right thing. But I'm going to be honest and I am with you. And if any of y'all think that I am less of a, a pastor or a preacher because I've not always been on the right road, then you don't understand how God works in redemption because none of you ever have either. Right. Amen. Amen? Paul said, I'm weak. That which I should do, I don't do. That which I don't do, shouldn't do, that I do. If, if you recognize that in your own life, raise your hand and say amen. 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 <laughs> amen. Yeah, I, I, I know God would love for me to, to, to be able to be so holy that my feet never touch the dirty ground. But guess what? I'm not that holy. I wish I was. I keep working on it. I'm going to keep working on it. I'm never going to stop. By the way, we have 98 in Sunday school. Praise the Lord. Wouldn't we like to see about two more show up? If you know somebody missing, call them. Tell them to hurry up. The preacher's preaching. You can get in just about the time he finishes and be counted. But they, the Lord showed up. Hanging out, walking to Emmaus, and Jesus shows up. How many of y'all understand that you can walk in the presence of the Almighty God and not know it? Not have a clue? Not have, I mean, I mean you know, you can't put two and two together to get this figured out. You're, you, there's Jesus. Totally don't get it. Totally don't recognize it. You see, the problem with the two men that was walking to Emmaus is they were not walking in their goal. They were walking in their emotion. Their emotion had told them that Jesus is dead and I'm sad. So their eyes, the Bible says, were holden. Now, I looked that up. Let me see what I wrote down because I looked that up. And, and, and I don't even, I don't know why on earth they've, used, they've translated that word in a lot of other better ways. But the actual correct uh, way it is understood is their vision was seized. You, you don't go to Emmaus with your eyesight open. You don't walk the road to Emmaus when you have your eyes on the prize. What did Paul say? Forgetting those things that were behind, I press toward the mark of the high calling of Jesus Christ. You see, too many times we remember the things that we had our emotion invested in. They had their emotion invested in a kingdom on this earth. A kingdom of this world. See, Jesus said to Pilate, He says, I am not of this world. Ye are of this world. My kingdom is above and you are beneath. I am not a king of this world. I am the king of kings. Amen. I am over... You know, the kingdom of God is moved when Jesus Christ, the king of all, sets up a throne inside of our hearts, minds, and strength, and He gives us a kingdom within ourselves as we yield to Him and we become the temple of the Most High God. So that way the things of heaven are evident upon this earth. The heaven is His throne and the earth is His footstool. It tells me that the greater part is not upon this earth. My mind is invested in the kingdom of God. Whenever they were walking to Emmaus, they were saddened because when as Jesus, they began to explain to Jesus. It's funny. It's hilarious. Just, you know, to me it is. Maybe it ain't to you. But Brother Roger, they were talking to Jesus about Jesus. Think about it. He said, why are you guys so sad and blue and, oh, poor pity you. And, and they're like, oh, you don't know. There was this guy. Have you, you, is this your first day in Jerusalem? Is this your first time to show up? Do you not know anything? This was Jesus they're talking to. <laughs> you, you don't have a clue. There was this guy by the name of Jesus. A prophet. A man of God a great man of signs and wonders and miracles of God on the face of this earth? Jesus of Nazareth? What a great God. What a great King. Didn't you ever hear about Him? This is your first day here. And all the while they were talking to Jesus. 
You see, sometimes the Lord has showed up to say, you called me. Let me hear your problems. Let me hear your situation. And we try to tell Jesus about Jesus. And we are talking to Jesus about Jesus based on our concept of who He is. They were looking for Him to pull out a bazooka and blow Rome off the face of the earth so that they could set up a king in Israel and that, man, we would like Him to be the king. We would like to put him, Jesus, He should be on the throne. He is a man of mighty deeds and word and, and great God and, and we would like Him to sit in Jerusalem and rule over everything. Didn't understand it. He wanted them to repent of their sins and be forgiven and walk in a holy and upright life and with peace and harmony with all mankind. He wanted them to have a, 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 a power and a relationship of God on the inside of them. He wanted to fill them with His Spirit. He wanted to set up a kingdom like no man had ever understood. And Jesus, I, I, it's just me. I, I may just, forgive me if you don't see it, but I, Sister Savannah, I just see Jesus like just chuckling underneath His breath. At the same time, kind of sighing. <sighs> How many times have I told these guys? And he says, Sister Blackwater, if, if Jesus ever says this to you, understand he's actually got an open door for you. But he says, oh fools. He's just trying to redirect their thinking. If he ever says to you, Brother Hart, hey you fool, pay attention, I got word for you. Don't get upset. Jesus is not mad at you. He's just trying to get your attention. But he says, oh, fools. Let me, let me get the exact quote. I like his quote. It's, but I can't make up a quote this good. Jesus, is, Jesus has got a way of saying things. And I can't read this morning. Do, 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 do. Where's it at? I know it's in the Bible. Sister, do uh, you have that? No, where he says, oh, I found it. Verse 25, throw it up there. Luke 24, 25. Watch this. Jesus says it pretty good. He says unto them, O fools and slow of heart, to believe all the prophets have said, have spoken. Go ahead, give me the next word. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into His glory? But Corey, we walk into Emmaus and we want Jesus in our glory. Sister Hodges, we want to keep Him out of His glory because when He leaves our glory, He moves into His glory. But what we don't understand is when we'll let Him be glorified, He's going to fill us with His Spirit. He's got more for you. He's got a plan. He's got an outcome. He's got something great. And the disciples, all they could say is, Oh, Jesus has died. <laughs> what am I going to do? And Sister Graham, I think they were just as upset that the body was gone because they couldn't memorialize a tomb. Think about that. The church of the something other sepulcher in Jerusalem. I don't want to go there. I want to go to the upper room. If there's going to be a memorial in my life, it's going to be the upper room experience, not the death and the burial. It's going to be that Jesus Christ is alive in my world. I don't need an Emmaus. I don't need a place to go and pout. I don't need to have a long, sad road. i got to have a glory road. i got to have a road that leads to evangelism, that leads to revival, that doesn't lead away from the revival, but leads to the revival. Amen. Emmaus is a sad place because all the way, I mean, Jesus shows up. Why are you two dragging the lips on the ground? You know, just, mm, poor pity me. Somebody stole my tail. Where's my, I love Eeyore. <laughs> Where's my tail? Pin the tail on the donkey. No, Jesus shows up. Hey, boys! And going back to Moses, he begins to speak to him that Jesus Christ must come. The, the Messiah must show up, but that He must suffer and die. I love it. He, he doesn't just kind of give them a little hint of it. Luke 24 and 4, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered up into the hands of sinful men to be crucified, 
the third day rise again. That's the word of the Lord. He reminds them of that. But when he reminds them of that, he's reminding them back to Mark 8 and 31 when he said it. He's reminding them back to John. How many places in the Bible had Jesus already told them? Jesus already showed you some things. Keep walking to Jerusalem. God's got revival for you. You see, there's a day of Pentecost coming. There's a day of hope coming. There's a day of life coming. Our deadness, our, our, our soreness, our pain, our suffering is coming to a point and He has rose again that we may have life and have it more abundantly. John 1 and 1, In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. What does that mean? In the beginning there was a plan. In the beginning... Before anything, how many of y'all know, and I've said it before, but I'll say it again because it's good to remember this. How many of y'all know that God created the heaven and earth? Raise your hand. Amen. Those of you that are unsure, raise your hand. Good, okay. How many of y'all believe that as beautiful as it is, He made farming to New Mexico by His own hand? Amen. And as wonderful as, as other places are, He made them by His own hand. I believe that he, he dropped, uh, uh, you know, he popped shipwreck out, out of the ground just to make us question how it got there. Right. Just to show he's God. Amen? Amen. I, I, I believe Bermuda's where it's at because he chose it to be there. I believe that Calvary is where it's at because he chose it to be there. In the beginning, God knew everything. In the beginning was the plan of God. And before He ever made a chimpanzee that we evolved from, He made Calvary. You're fired. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I was waiting on somebody. I had some big old, you know, big old dish saucer eyes looking at me. He said, what? If you evolve from, uh, some of us I wonder, including myself, if I didn't evolve from monkeys, but I know better. I just question it by my actions every now and then. <laughs> I, I think y'all may, some of y'all may evolve from monkeys because you monkey around, but me, because I horse around, I think I came from a horse. <laughs> but, uh, sorry. I'm... <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, before He made me, Sister Vickers, before He made you, Adam and Eve was not even formed of the dust of the earth yet. And Calvary was already built. He designed it. He had a plan. So we go back and we wonder why. It, we, we've been brought into a space of time that our relationship with God and the things of God. And here is the two men on the road to Emmaus and, and their plans of what Jesus was supposed to mean failed to the promise and the plan of God. But the Lord was there to give them a message. Go back to Jerusalem. You know, I like what happened whenever they began to sit there that day and they got close to, to Emmaus and Jesus kind of acted like He was going to keep on going. He was just going to wander on down the road and, and they didn't even know, still didn't know who He was. Because their emotion that they were walking with was greater than their vision of what they had. But sometimes I, I, I walk with vision. I I do. I'm a, I'm, people call me a visionary. Or wait, no, they say I'm a dreamer. I'm not sure which. <laughs> but but, but I, I do. I, you know, I got, I got all kind of stuff in here that, that I see. That, that we're going. And we're going places. I, I, I know where I'm heading. I know what, what God is wanting to do through, through the work of God. And there's a lot of steps between here and there. The vision is not clouded. Amen? How many of y'all got a vision of what God's doing in your life? How many's got a vision of what God's going to do for your family? The Bible says without a vision of people perish. You see, at Emmaus, God's trying to renew our vision. God's trying to get us past the emotion of the moment and get us into the vision of the hereafter, of all eternity. God is trying to open up vision because it's sitting in this house today is parents of great men of God. Sitting in this house today is parents of great women of God. Amen. I'm so glad you are confirming that vision. <laughs> Trust me on this. If you've never believed anything, believe that. That 
from within your walls of your house as great people of God. Amen? Amen. From within the walls of your community is a great revival. Amen. Vision. See it. But sometimes, Brother Hodges, our emotion overshadows our vision. <laughs> Brother Hart, I, I'll say this to you because they can't hear me. But I would imagine that there were some times that the vision of what my grandfather saw in me was overshadowed by the confusion of my present situation back then. Yeah. To the point where he probably felt like maybe I saw it wrong, heard it wrong, felt it wrong, did it wrong. I may, you know what? Maybe all of a sudden he got on the road to Emmaus. And Jesus had to show up. You know, I'll never forget, and I always wondered why until after the Lord dealt with me about it one night. I always wondered why that, that before and out of time, I began to feel God moving so strong. And I, I went to Granddad and I said, I, 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 I got to preach. God's called me to preach. Son, I know. Okay. He said, Wednesday night, be ready. For what? <laughs> Went to a church I had... It was the last church he ever built. Put me up in the pulpit. And I preached best I could. And then I... Granddad had a stroke and died like right after that. Boom. Gone. I'm going to tell you, the Lord I gave him an opportunity to see the vision that was still yet in the development. You see, why on earth would God have... have I don't think I changed anything in people's lives that day. See, sometimes we wander off in our, in our problems and Jesus has just gotten crucified and somebody stole His body and, and, and I was going to put Him on Herod's throne. I would have died to fight the soldiers of Rome because of Jesus. But would you fall on your face and cry and pray into the midnight hour because they were about to crucify Him? No, when He was praying, you were sleeping. Amen? But you know what? He came alive. Why? Because He came alive so that He could be on the inside of us, so that He could give us a vision, so that He could give us a power, so that we could stand up on our own two feet and proclaim the goodness of God, so that life could come on the inside of us, so that our dead vision would be changed, so we could see Him in all of His glory, in all of His understanding. What was it Stephen said? I look and I see that Jesus is on the right hand of God. I'm going to tell you what, there's a God that's alive. Brother Hodges, you know, I, 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 a lot of people were prophets. A lot of prophets in this world. I, 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 got, I, got, I got no problem. No pro don't, nobody throw anything at me. I got no problem saying Muhammad was a prophet. I, I, I got no issues with saying he was a prophet. But compared to Jesus... Jesus is God in the flesh. That's right. So you put your prophet up against my God and we'll find out who's true. You can worship your prophet all you want, but I'm going to tell you I'm worshiping the God. I'm worshiping the God. Y'all waiting for it. I, 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 I've already said it. You see, uh, uh, Brother Roger... Here's it boils down to it. I believe he was a prophet. I believe Muhammad was a prophet. Everybody's still like gawking at me. He was a false prophet. Yes. <laughs> there is a difference. True prophets testify of the true God. False prophets make up their own God. They're both prophets. One's true, one's a lie. That's right. And here is God in the flesh. Present him himself beyond the words of a prophet. You see, all they could see was he's a prophet. All they could see is that he was a prophet. But Jesus began to proclaim his power and his authority and his righteousness and, and, and began to show forth who he was. He was the king of the prophets. He was the, the God of the prophets. He was everything. For God was manifested in the flesh. All of a sudden, you see, sometimes we get into walking down the road and God begins to reveal himself to us in truth and understanding. And God begins to wipe away all the, the veils of misunderstanding and bad concepts. And he begins to show us that he's alive and here for us. 
and died for us, but rose again for us. And it must needs to have been done that way. And we all of a sudden get our eyes off of our situation. And we start having vision. And the Bible says that when He broke the bread and He fixed some food, He blessed it. And He broke the bread. You see, He had been dealing with them but their emotions was overshadowing their vision. Their emotions was overshadowing their vision. Sometimes your emotion will overshadow your vision. Uh, this, this last week, I, 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 I tell you, I, I'm, I'm as weak as everybody else in here in the flesh because we weak, weak minded, we, we are weak individuals. But I, I, this week, Brother Hodges, it was, it was a tough one. The, the enemy was, a, was just, just pounding and bombarding my mind. I ain't talking about sin. I'm just talking about, you know, the vision got cloudy because the emotion of all of the junk that was going on was breaking my heart and was causing me to stop seeing where God was sending us and what God is trying to do through us and what God has for revival for this city and this church. My emotions got the better of my vision. But whenever I began to break the word of life, all of a sudden my vision came back. All of a sudden I began to see, Sister Johnson, God's got something for you. But Brother Hodges, God has something for you. But we all, God's got something for us. We're here for a reason. We're not here by chance. We're not here by accident. You're on the road to Emmaus, Brother Dunn. But I need to come and talk to you for a minute. Some of us are on the road to Emmaus. Jesus is walking with us. Our emotion are blind, is blinding our vision. But the Bible says, And their eyes were open, and they knew Him. When Jesus opens your eyes, I, this, is, this, is, this is kind of funny. Jesus is with them, in Emmaus, eating corn dogs, and, or fish tacos, whatever. That was more like it, fish tacos, because they had bread and fish, so fish tacos. And it was in Emmaus. Um, why on earth would Jesus, when He opened up their eyes, vanish from their sight? Because Emmaus was not where they needed to be. Brother Hart, Jesus met them and walked with them into Emmaus. But while they were there, when He got their eyes open, He vanished from their sight. Why? Because I didn't send you to Emmaus. I need you to go back to Jerusalem. And the Bible says, well, hello darling, the Bible says that that very hour. Now they had done testified that it was getting dark, that nightfall was upon them, that we shouldn't, you know, back then you didn't you didn't go up and down the roads back then at night by yourself. I, I don't know it what what if if your city that you've always lived in has been in this area. I've lived in some pretty rough places. Hello? I've lived in some very Strange places. I have been in some, uh, when they had riots up and down the streets, I, I've been there. I know what it's like. I, I, I remember what it was like to have the outlaw motorcycle gang on the left-hand side of my car and the Ku Klux Klan on the right-hand side of my car driving down a main highway, just pacing me down the road with shotguns in their laps looking for somebody. I also know what it's like to walk down city streets that just hours before somebody had been shot down, somebody had been stabbed. In broad daylight. Those areas, you don't travel at night. But when the vision of the work of God comes on, when the call of God when all of a sudden your eyes are opened and you can see where God wants you. You'll get up from where you're at and in the worst of times, in the worst of conditions, and no matter how hard it is, Brother Hodges, I'm going to make my march back to where I need to be because Jesus has got to work for me. Jesus has a call on my life. I have vision again. My emotions are not clouding my vision, but I'm going back to my destination. Amen. I love it. They got back there. 
And he came back and, all, and, and there was all the disciples gathered together. And these two guys went in and said, Jesus just met with us. We just had supper with Jesus. I, I was on the road to Emmaus. I was, I was just, I was tired of this. I, I was all distraught and torn up. God, it, they had just testified that Jesus was already risen from the grave. And they couldn't even get it because their emotion was so clouded that Jesus died three days ago. Get to the place of forgiveness forgiveness and redemption. We get right to the edge of the promise. I mean, here is the promise sitting right here. It won't be but a few more days, Brother Daniel, and the Holy Ghost is going to be poured out. You know, we're about on the verge of celebrating Pentecost Sunday. Anybody know what Pentecost Sunday is besides my three teachers that was in meeting this morning? May the 27th. May the 27th is a, is a celebration of Pentecost. That is when the Holy Ghost was poured out. They were just days. You see, Jesus had to die. Jesus had to be buried. Jesus had to resurrect from the grave. Jesus had to ascend to heaven. Jesus had to minister for a few days. And then the Holy Ghost was going to come. When the Holy Ghost got poured out, that is Jesus on the inside of us. They were on the verge. Just a few short weeks. Just, a, just like seven weeks away from the outpouring of the greatest things in, before sliced bread. You ever wonder what was great before sliced bread? If everything was the greatest thing since sliced bread, what was the greatest thing before sliced bread? And I'm just always wondered that. Bread. <laughs> you know, but here, they're at the moment, at the crest of the promise. Vision gets clouded, but Jesus, being full of grace and mercy, finds them at their Emmaus, finds them on their road away from Jerusalem. And the Bible says when they got back to Jerusalem that very night, they found the disciples. And when they went in the house with them, they closed the door and Jesus appeared unto them all. Somebody in this house this morning, if you're on the road to Emmaus, if you're on the road away from Jerusalem, let me tell you something. There is a body of believers here that we need your unity. We need your unity to bring about the power and the revival of God in this city. We don't need you at Emmaus, Brother Hodges. We don't need you over at Emmaus, Sister V. Hill. We need you in Jerusalem. When we bind ourselves together in unity, when we bring ourselves together in prayer, when we bring ourselves together in the vision of what God has for the face of this earth, and we remove the emotion that is covering our eyes, and we realize that, hey, I've got a God that everything may seem black, but I believe everything's going to be all right. I may be a David down here in the middle of my warfare. I might be facing the greatest giant that's ever been faced, but I have a vision, and I'm going to hold that vision. Hallelujah. I like what they said. They looked one to another and said, Did not our hearts burn within us? After they got their vision back, all, oh, you know, sometimes, Sister Emmett, we go through stuff. And, I'm, and you've been up through a lot of stuff. And I would imagine, you're just let me pick on you, because I have a feeling that you've been through this and it, and it happened just like this for you. And if I'm wrong, it's okay. I don't care. I can be wrong. But it happened for these guys like that. It's happened for me like this. So all of your sickness and all the problems you've been through in the last, what, four months. Sometimes the Word of God that you've heard has just kind of gone in storehouse. You've tried to utilize it, but the situations at the time was so pressing. But then all of a sudden, it just all comes back in like a flood. It has for me, and I don't know if it has for you, but it has for me. Just all of a sudden, all of those things that I heard, I, I kind of had them like a, like, a little, like a little chipmunk with all the nuts in his cheek. Wasn't working for his stomach until all of a sudden he said, wait a minute, I can eat these things, they're mine! And all of a sudden that nourishment just begins to come in like a flood. All of a sudden it begins to fill ourselves. All of a sudden we get strength again. I'm going to tell you what this morning, God is trying to open our vision. And when we get it open, He's got all of this that He has laid. And it's going to come in like a flood. It's going to lift us up. It's going to carry us over the problems and over the trials and over the situations. And all of a sudden we won't even have a recollection of what we were going through in the past. But all we can see is where God's taking us. I don't believe the two men on the road to Emmaus ever gave one hide or hair about that road again. Why? Because they held on in just a few days more and it was Pentecost Sunday and it was time for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost and it was time for revival and 3,000 was added to the church and 5,000 was added to the church and in 30 years they evangelized the entirety of the world. Amen. 
because vision was opened up again. There's an experience at Emmaus, and it brings us back to Jerusalem. If you're in Emmaus this morning, I challenge you to hear the Word of God and to let it remove the blinders off of your eyes. Our emotions and our trials and our circumstances will blind our vision. But Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It may seem like that's the end of the road, but I'm telling you that Jesus has paved it and He's made a way to get there. All you've got to do is keep on marching for Jesus. All you've got to do is keep on holding on to His unchanging hand. All you've got to do is keep on believing. No matter what the devil may put in your mind, you keep on holding on. No matter what the devil said about this or that or the other, you keep on marching on. Devil, you're a liar and the father of it. I know right from wrong. And the Bible said it's right. I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to make heaven my home. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's move from Emmaus relationship on to a relationship in Jerusalem. Because on the day of Pentecost, there is going to be an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. There's going to be an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. You know what? Your Pentecost in your home might be a different day than the, than the 27th of May. But there may be a Pentecost coming. The winds of heaven are blowing. And if you'll just open the windows and let it blow in, watch what God will do for you. Your fear will be blown out the window. Your sins will be blown away by the mercies of God. All of the problems that you face will be blown away. Nothing can withstand. All of a sudden, your eyes will be open and God's got something for you. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's stand and talk to the Lord this morning. Lord, I thank